As a scientist, I think I would love studying anything, but the Aurora specifically has this visual beauty and kind of attraction to it. It's something you can actually see. While the particles that are created are not something we can see, we have to have specialized detectors to measure them. The Aurora itself, you can see, so it feels tangible. It feels like something you can kind of, you know, have familiarity with. It's an everyday thing, right? Like a rainbow. I am Marilia Samara, and I'm a scientist at Goddard Space Flight Center. I study a lot of things, but one of the things I study quite a bit is the aurora. The first aurora I saw, by any standard, is probably like a very faint, not so exciting aurora, but I just remember that feeling. I was out in the cold, it was pretty cold, it was dark. We had spent the day up at Booker Flat counting for um, a rocket, and um, we hadn't seen anything. And just as we were getting up to this area called Cleary Summit, it looked like maybe there's some aurora, we stopped, and it was just the faintest of things. And there was just this overwhelming excitement to just get out there and see it. And that stayed with me and has stayed with me all the years I've been studying it. Every time I see it, it's exciting. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit or a lot. Studying the aurora definitely brings out the little kid in me and the curiosity about how the world works. My name is Robert Michel. I'm from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Right now we're out at Poker Flat Research Range. We're overlooking the launch pads down below where the uh, rockets are on the rail getting ready to launch. One of the things that really fascinates me about the aurora is that it's so variable. That you see so many things, so much variation. And it's one of those things that that you can see with your eye. And it's something that a little kid would ask you, what causes that? And that's the kind of question that we're going after, right? Like, what causes those structures? Why is it? Why does it move like that, right? These are the kind of questions that we don't know the answers to, but they're the really obvious questions that anybody would ask. And that's what we're trying to study. We are out here gearing up for two experiments that comprise three different rockets, two of which are part of the giraffe mission, one of which is part of the badass mission. So we're here to study the Aurora with a sounding rocket. What that means is that we want to launch a rocket up over the Aurora and effectively measure the things that create it. Now the Aurora means a lot of things and there's a lot of different types of Aurora. What we're specifically looking for is what we call a uh, black and diffuse Aurora. Our science mission is called Black and Diffuse Aurora Science Surveyor. And diffuse is a general term for the kind of Aurora that within it has black Aurora. The reason we call it black Aurora is because when we look at the Aurora with our naked eye, we see areas where there's no light and that could actually be that there's no aurora there, or it could be that there's sort of like a reverse structure that has to do with the aurora. The rocket experiment I'm here with is called GIRAFFE, and that stands for Ground Imaging to Rocket Investigations of Auroral Fast Features. And that's a long way of saying that we're studying some of the fastest optical variations that we see within the aurora. So I've heard it said before that Poker Flat is a unique place. I almost feel like that's an understatement. It's just kind of hard for me to express my enthusiasm and fondness of Poker Flat. I think Poker Flat is one of the best places for doing aurora research. I basically wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for Poker Flat and all the research that happens out here and all the colleagues that I've worked with. I'm very grateful for all the support that we get from all the teams that support this, both on the Wallop side and at the Geophysics Institute side and the university side. Launching rockets is, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's ever frustrating, it's exciting for sure. And there's also a sense of calm, trying to sort of like be present in what's going on in nature and observe it. It's a really exhilarating experience when you go through the countdown and you, find, and you give your final go as the PI and then everybody goes down the checklist and you hear the countdown over the loudspeaker and then you finally see the rocket go off. When a launch is successful, it feels like coming home. It feels like this calmness, this relief when you're getting to your home and um, things have concluded. Our work still is ahead of us quite a bit because we have to look at the data, but there, it's a conclusion of things. So it's a great moment. That's why I say it feels like coming home. Five, four, three, two, one.